Hello to the folks um, just hopping on. Let's give it about one more minute here, let a few more people join us, and then we can go ahead and get started. All right, thank you everyone for joining our monthly user webinar. This session is for the Evolve Electrical users to get a chance to work directly with our customer success and product teams. We demonstrate features, go over some of the common questions that we hear, and we will be taking your questions live today. So please, as your questions come up, submit them in the Q&A function. Um, we will you know, try to answer them as we go along or get to them at the end. And here is a look at the amazing customer success and product team that we have on the call today. Um, as a reminder, this webinar is being recorded and we will forward the recording to all registrants. You can also find all of our webinar recordings on the Evolve YouTube channel. So with that, I'm going to let Alex Sieber, your customer success specialist, uh, kick things off today. Awesome, thank you, Marina. Hello, everyone. Uh, just kind of wanted to uh, give a quick little announcement here at the top of the webinar. Uh, so I know that we've talked about our LMS uh, in the past, but just kind of wanted to bring it up again. Um, we're adding new content every week. So just wanted to throw out uh, that we could uh, we could sign you up if you're interested. Um, if you are just an individual user that's looking to get signed up, I'm actually posting the link to the landing page. So that way you can sign up for that. Uh, if you want to sign up your entire team, that's definitely okay too. Uh, I put my email in there. Go ahead and shoot me an email that you're interested and then I'll shoot uh, the sign up sheet over to you. So that way we can get you and your team signed up for Evolve University. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns uh, when it pertains to the LMS, please feel free to reach out. And with that, I will uh, pass it over to Jason. Awesome. Thank you, Alex. All right. Um, so today, uh, what I'd like to go over is uh, our sample files. Um, so as of yesterday, uh, we have published new sample files. Um, where to get the sample files, if you go to foresight.evolvemep.com, and I'm going to drop that link in the chat. Um, so if you're not familiar with our sample files, our sample files are a sample model with some sample reports and um, a lot of different already pre-set up configurations. So it's kind of a sandbox um, that you can use if you want to tinker around with Evolve or if you just want to see some examples of uh, different configurations uh, for different features already set up. Um, so to get those sample files, like I said, you'll go to the foresight.evolvemep.com. And once you log in, uh, you will need to have access to the admin module. So if, if you are an administrator uh, for your company, uh, for Evolve, then you'll come to the admin module um, up here. If you don't have access to this admin module, uh, then you'll want to get in touch with whoever is the admin for your uh, Evolve uh, licensing system. So once you come into the admin module, uh, we'll come over here to the uh, menu that pops out here and down in company and then in company properties. Uh, that's where we'll find our sample files. Um, so you can click uh, right down there uh, to download those. Once you get those downloaded, um, what you're going to want to do is open the file. So I've got them downloaded here. Let's take a look real quick. So within the zip file, uh, you'll have three different uh, files here. Uh, one's a folder with all of the sample files. There's a readme uh, with some information. And then there's an update notice with some of the uh, changes that we have made to the sample files. Um, the best place to put these files, um, if you're able to, is to put them in the uh, local disk C uh, temp folder. Um, you don't have to uh, place them here. Um, but if you do, the reports that we'll look at are all paths uh, to this path. Um, so if you don't put it here, you may have to do a little bit of repathing on the reports. 
Um, but ideally, this is where you'll place those files. All right, so within the Evolve folder here, uh, we've got a folder for the Evolve reports. Um, so within here, these are all the different reports. So here's some examples of the electrical reports. These are the actual files. Um, and we'll take a look at some of those reports in a little bit. Um, we've also got some examples of where to export uh, files to. And then within this v1.04 is where we'll find the sample model and configurations. Um, so when it comes to opening the sample model, um, what you'll want to do is go into the sample model folder. And then for electrical, um, you'll want to open this uh, EE sample model. And then that sample link will already be linked. Um, and then we have an example for mechanical as well. Um, but for this webinar, um, we're just interested in this sample model. All right, so once you have all of those uh, set up and uh, installed on your computer, um, we're ready to jump into Revit. So I've opened the uh, sample model here. And if we go to a floor plan, um, we can see the model here. Um, and if you've seen the old one, the model has uh, grown a good bit in size. Um, so we've added some more stuff here. Um, so within the uh, sample model itself, some of the things that you have available to you to start looking at is we've already got uh, locations uh, configured with some locations set up. Uh, we've got a couple of location sheets that have been created uh, that you can take a look at. So we've got that created. Um, you, we can go into the title block here. So if location is something you've been curious about, um, definitely take a look at this. You can look at the title block that we used to automatically generate this sheet. Um, so that is in there, already pre-configured. And coming back, if we look in prefabrication, there are some spools, and I believe there are some packages as well. Um, so we've got some spools where we've already generated some sheets. So you can take a look at those, open those up. You can feel free to uh, steal these title blocks and put them in your own project if you like. Um, so within there, we've got some sample uh, title blocks uh, configured for the uh, spool feature. All right. So that's the spools that we've got in here. We've also got sleeve rules set up. So if uh, sleeves is something that you're not familiar with and you're curious how it works, it's all configured in this sample model. The only thing that you'll want to do is come in here into settings and just make sure that the loaded linked model is enabled. Um, and that will uh, get the sleeves to work with the link. Um, you may have some pathing issues. I know I uh, did not path it where I told you guys to put it. Um, so. You just want to make sure you come in and turn on that linked model. Um, but we've got some examples of some sleeve rules, as well as applying some box out rules. And that will go ahead and convert uh, multiple sleeves that are next to each other uh, into a box out uh, automatically. Um, so if you've never used the sleeve settings, definitely uh, take a look at this. Um, it can save you a ton of time uh, placing sleeves in your models. Um, for supports, we have a uh, configuration set up for these as well. So if we come and look at these profiles, uh, we've got quite a few profiles in here, um, different examples of how to set this up. Um, so you can go in, check those out, test them out in the model, see how you like them, um, and create you know either the same or uh, similar ones in your own models. Um, within points, uh, there's not really much to configure within points, but there are points in the model. Um, if you'd like to play around with that. Uh, when it comes to conduit data, we've got a conduit run schedule uh, loaded in here. So this is a great example of how you can set up your uh, run schedule with your wire specifications, um, some system options here for your different systems. Um, and then there are some run IDs applied. Um, so you can take a look at how, how those operate. Um, let's see, uh, coming over to cabling, We've got some cabling uh, set up in here. So some MC cable with uh, in-wall devices. Um, so if you're not currently doing in-wall in your model and uh, you know, you're know you getting uh, some pressure from above uh, to start looking at how you might do in-wall in Revit, um, there's some great examples in here of 
uh, in wall. All right, so next up, um, that looks like pretty much it. Um, we've got some example uh, renumber configurations in here. Um, so if you know if the shop or the field is asking for things to be labeled because you're shipping out in spools or packages, um, renumber is a great way to give things an identifier to match them up with what's on the sheet. Um, so we've got some example renumber configurations set up in here as well. All right, um, with that said, um, we've also got element filters uh, configured in here. Um, element filters, um, you know, I would say, and especially for electrical, um, this is out of all the utilities, um, this is one that I would make it a point to learn. Um, these element filters are extremely useful um, in your everyday work. Um, it makes turning on and off walls or on and off structure, turning on and off uh, anything that you want to toggle uh, to make it easier to see what you're trying to see. Um, element filters is a great tool for that. So as you can see in here, uh, we've got quite a few uh, element filters already preset up in this model. Um, so take a look at those uh, definitely. All right, there's also uh, a slew of parameter sync rules in here. Um, some of these using, well, it looks like many of them actually, uh, using PowerShell as well. So um, if you've seen the PowerShell options and some of the features and you've always kind of wondered, hey, can I actually use this for something? Um, there's a lot of great examples here. Um, and if you do want to write some PowerShell, you can always reach out to us through support um, and we're more than happy to help you uh, with your PowerShell scripting. All right. I believe we also have uh, for find elements, if we go ahead and we load in our data profiles, um, we have some examples here of different data profiles. Now, some of these would be used for find elements. Some of them will be used for other features. Um, but we can do, let's see, if I want to pull in my in-wall bomb, maybe I want to take a look at what I've got in there. We can pull all that information in. We can export it out to Excel. Uh, find elements is a great way to query the model. Um, we can also go and find things in the model as well. And if we don't have it visible in the view, it'll go and look for one, but that might take a while. So do find elements. Oops, not sure where that one is. Let's see if we can find that one. All right, so that I found it. If it's visible in a view, it'll zoom in and uh, snap to it. Um, so this can be a great way to, uh, say, keep track of your equipment and your model. You can create a data profile for your equipment. And as you go through the model, you can quickly use this to audit it or find those elements in the model, uh, make those parameter changes, uh, whatever the need may be. All right, so with that, um, we will find there are some other things in here that have uh, some configurations already set up. Um, but now um, I think we'll go ahead and talk about reports. Um, kind of before we go into uh, reports, um, let's just kind of give an overview. So reports, you can kind of think of as fancy schedules. Um, they look a lot nicer than schedules. You can customize them further. Um, and uh, we have a variety here of sample reports that you can use. Um, and we do also offer report creation as a service um, if you'd like to get custom reports uh, made for your team. Um, so how do these reports work? Um, you know, we do have a video series. I think it's eight videos. Um, I think it's a total of about three or four hours um, that will take you from uh, an example Revit schedule all the way to creating a report. Um, and you can find those if you click on the help document. If we come down here, let's see, are those in here? And customizing reports. Oops, not that one. Let's see. All right, that one may not be in here. If we go back to reports in here, Let's see, uh, we've got these videos down here. So it looks like they've been split apart into multiple articles. 
Um, but if you come in here to the report section on the help site, um, we have uh, a wealth of information on creating reports. All right, um, coming back in here. So the way these reports work is uh, we have to tell it what we want to report on, right? So we don't necessarily want to report on the whole model. Uh, we only want to report on certain elements. So the way that we do that is with data profiles. And that's uh, configured in here in the primary profile and the additional profiles. So what these uh, data profiles are, uh, the way that you can think about it is it's a data pipeline. It's how uh, Evolve pipes data from the model into the report. Um, so one way to get to the data profiles is from over here in the cogwheels. We can get to it there. Or we can just go ahead and open it straight from the ribbon. Data profiles, so like I said, it's a way to pipe information into reports, but it's also used in other uh, features as well. So when we looked at uh, find elements, that one uses uh, data profiles as well. So it pipes the information into that feature. When we configure our data profile, um, what we'll do is we'll create a profile kind of up top here. So you can see these ones in the sample files are grouped all nice and neat. Um, so we can see the relevant ones here for properties, reports, materials, and find elements. Um, these kind of define the data profile. So within that, uh, we'll give it a subgroup if we want for grouping. Uh, we'll give it a name and a description so that we know what it is and what it's for. Um, and then the key here is the element filter. So that's how we're deciding which elements are going into this pipeline. Uh, that's pushing data into these other features. So just like all the other element filters that you find in Evolve, and just like you would find uh, filters in Revit schedules or Revit view filters, you'll configure your uh, element filter here to filter the model down to just the elements uh, that you are interested in. Um, the direction here, almost all the time, it will be export, um, right? If we're pushing, if we're piping data into another feature, um, selection scope, this is where do we want to pull our data from? Do we want it from the whole project? Do we want it just from the active view? Do we want it from the current selection? Or do we want to prompt on execution? So that's uh, the container that we're pulling from. We can think about it like that. So once we've established our data profile and we've said what elements that we're interested in, that we want to pipe that data into another feature, uh, we need to tell it, hey, what data do you want? Um, and so that's what we'll do for the fields down below. So each data profile, you can see as I click through them, the fields uh, vary because each data profile uh, is pushing different information into uh, wherever it may go. Um, so in this case, this one would be going into find elements. Um, so down here, this is where we'll define what information uh, that that uh, tool that it that's using it, what information it needs, what information do we care about? So we could kind of think of like properties similar to that. So with properties, whenever we click on an element, we see all the parameters for that element. But uh, typically, uh, we don't need to see all of that information. So that's what we're doing down here in the fields is we're picking out what information from the elements that pass our element filter uh, that we want to make available uh, in the pipeline uh, that we're using. Um, so we can see down here in electrical, um, we'll just add our fields. So you know all of the fields um, will pull from a parameter or a special uh, value. Um, so we'll give it a column name. Uh, just you know if we want to see it with a different name, uh, we could name it the same as the parameter. Um, but the main thing here is the parameter. So in this pipeline where we're pushing this data off to a feature, the, the data that we're pushing is a parameter value. And then the column name just describes the, the, call, the parameter value that we're, that we're pushing in. Um, so if we come down here to reports, we can see there's a lot more because there's one uh, for each report. Um, so if we take a look in here, so for our equipment schedule report, what information would we need in that equipment schedule? 
Well, um, I won't go through all of these, but just some examples. Um, we want to know the type name. Uh, we want to know the equipment ID if we're using that parameter to uh, identify it. We probably want the evolved description. We want to know how we want to know the dimensions of the equipment. We want to know whether the submittal is approved or not, um, as well as some additional information uh, down here. So that's um, to kind of sum up uh, data profiles in a nutshell. Um, data profiles are a way to pull information from the model, slim it down to exactly what you want, and push it into another tool within Evolve. All right, so that was quite a lot. Um, but all of that, just to say, that's how we get data into uh, reports. All right, so let's take a look at some of these reports that we've got here, um, that we've got as examples. Um, this first one, uh, let's look at the cut list report. So I'm going to run this report, and I've got some pages here. It says it's got a cut list. It's got my project information in here. Um, it's because this is an example, we've got a look place for a logo that you could edit in your own. Um, and coming through here of this cut list, uh, we can see over here on the left, uh, these are how we'll change the filtering or the grouping of the report. So these reports, um, depending on how they're constructed, are actually quite dynamic. Um, so we can make one report that works for the whole model, and then we can filter it, say, by area, by spool, um, whatever you could think of um, at the end of the day. So if we want to enable filtering, we can do that. So we can see right now, everything's just kind of grouped up by the family name or the evolved description. So we can see it you know, for each uh, cut we have in the model. Um, but we also have the spool here. Um, and maybe we want to know uh, by spool what each spool has in it, um, because maybe that's how it's going to be produced. Um, so within here in the filtering, uh, we've got quite a few different uh, options to filter by. Um, but the one we'll talk about here is filter by spool. So I hit yes to turn that on. And we'll hit submit. And we can see all of these in here now. So you'll notice I've got spool NA. Um, and that's just indicating that it's not in a spool. So maybe I don't want those in there. So we'll turn that off. All right. So now coming through, I can see for each spool, I can see what cuts are in there. So the different types of rod and strut and whatever it may be uh, that needs to get cut uh, for, for that spool. All right, so that's the example of the cut list. You know, and as you can see here, um, you know, this is, you know, you, you could create an equivalent schedule of this, um, but what you'll end up needing to do is um, either create multiple schedules or it's, you know, you might be exporting to Excel, not, not the prettiest, not the most professional format. It gets the job done. Um, but these reports, um, you know, are configured to look very clean, look very professional. Um, so it's a it's a great tool out there if it's something that uh, you would like to do. All right, so let's take a look at the conduit run schedule that we've got in here. All right, so from this one. Uh, this is going to look similar to the uh, conduit run schedule that you would have in uh, the conduit run schedule feature or in the manager. Um, but here we just have an example of that report. And we can break this one down. Hey, maybe we just want to know about the emergency uh, feeders because you know maybe these ones are a special conduit type and they want to order this because that stuff's going to get run first. So instead of having to edit my schedule or create four separate schedules by system, I'll just go in here and filter down to which system I'm interested in. Um, once we've, you know, once we've got our uh, report run and we're ready to export it, um, you have a variety of options on how you want to export it. So we can do print to just directly print it. We can also do export document. So most commonly, that will be PDF. So we can uh, set that out. There's some uh, kind of advanced options if you want on here, or we can just hit OK, and that'll go ahead and export. All right, so coming in here, 
now we have our exported PDF of our schedule. All right. So we looked at a couple of them. Um, we've got uh, schedules in here for the most part for just about everything you could think of for an electrical model, um, all the way from you know uh, trapezes to cable tray to in-wall equipment. Um, a pretty comprehensive list of reports at this point. Um, when it comes to editing those reports, um, not to scare anybody, but we'll just look in the report designer here for a second. Um, once we have a report made that we want to edit or we create a new one, uh, we have the uh, report designer. Um, so within here, um, this is everything that you would use uh, to configure a report. Um, so as you can see, um, it's kind of its own software within Evolve. Um, so like I said before, uh, we do have plenty of resources um, if you would like to learn how to use this yourself. Um, and then we do also offer now uh, report creation as a service, if that is something you're interested in. All right. Um, so with that, um, that's kind of really everything I have to go through on the sample files and uh, the sample reports that we have. Um, if anybody has any questions, um, feel free now or at any point to type those in um, into the Q&A. Uh, it looks like we've got one here already, so let's go ahead and uh, answer that. Uh, can we have a cable tray run schedule like the conduit run schedule? Um, yes, you could. Uh, there's not one today. Um, if that's something that you're looking for, um, I'll put my email out here in the chat. Um, if you could, um, we're looking for feedback on what customers are looking for in a cable tray schedule. Um, so if you have any deliverables, um, any sheets, uh, spreadsheets, anything that you would take from the model and deliver to a customer or internally um, that you would use to report on uh, what information would be needed for that cable tray. Um, we would love to hear your feedback. Um, and it's definitely something that we're open to doing. All right. Um, so with that, I don't see any other questions just yet. Um, so I'll go ahead and throw it over to Adam for a couple housekeeping items. Uh, thanks, Jason. Um, yeah, I guess the only thing I had uh, really was uh, the weekly office hours that we're holding. Um, let me just grab this link here. So this is something you can sign up for. Uh, it's an open meeting. Here, we can post this in. Um, <clears throat> uh, it's an open Zoom meeting. Uh, usually we'll do a training topic of some sort, whether it's a, open, you know, a core feature uh, or it could be electrical or mechanical specific. Uh, but then we also leave open time for open Q&A, answer any questions, whether it's related to the topic or not. Um, but it's a good time to uh, get kind of a one-on-one -on -one, uh, or, you know, a, a more direct conversation with a trainer, um, ask questions. You know, I definitely encourage people to send advanced question, uh, questions in advance. Uh, we could potentially prepare for them, come up with uh, workarounds or ways of doing certain things that you're trying to um, accomplish. So just keep that in mind. Uh, one other thing that I'll show, let me fire up um, the mechanical sample model. So uh, we are, one of the enhancements to the reports we're going to be doing is uh, some uh, labels. And give me one second to pull this up. So I just want to show an, a sample label with what you can do here. Sorry, I have to find it. Let's 
So this is in the sample project. That sample file contains both electrical and mechanical models. Um, so you can certainly uh, take a look at this. Um, but in this ITM hangar uh, report, if you come into here, and you'll have to itemize the hangers and then select uh, the print labels. Here's an example of some labels. Actually, let's color these. So these are some example uh, hanger labels that we created uh, based on uh, some examples that were submitted to us. Um, we're, we're probably going to do another one for points. Um, that was a common one that's been asked a few times now. Uh, so we're going to explore labels in more uh, detail, but uh, again, you know, a lot of these are to give you some ideas. Many of these reports can be used in production environment and don't even have to be modified. Um, labels, maybe not so much, but we're going to try to come up with some good templates there uh, to um, give you as a starting point. Um, the minimal color, I'll show this just to kind of Give another little example of the coloring that you can do. So it's pretty a pretty nice uh, label. Um, but that is all I had to cover. Great, thanks so much. And thank you to everyone who has attended our Evolve Electrical User Webinar today. Hope that you found the information valuable. Please make sure to follow us on social media to keep up with all of our upcoming webinars and events. You can also find more demos and our past webinar recordings on the Evolve YouTube channel. And just as a final reminder, this webinar has been recorded and we are going to send out the recording in an email to all registrants. Thanks again, everyone, and have a great day.